90 days ago. Oh my God, this happened. One day I was sitting in a restaurant with my family and someone sent me a link to a six month old Doberman puppy who was looking to be rehomed. And as soon as I saw the pictures, I immediately fell in love. After not spending that much time convincing Path, we went to go and see her the next day. I immediately knew that she was going to come home with us. We played, we went for a structured walk with Lonzo and we also took her into a shopping centre to make sure that she was okay with busy noises and people and also some passing dogs. Almost immediately, a woman with her three dogs passed us and Zen did react. I remember at the time my heart kind of dropped because with Lonzo, I already have a dog who is struggled with reactivity and aggression and I didn't really want to add another dog into that mix. We continued. We went to a busy shopping area and we passed multiple dogs and she seemed to be okay. And with her being so young, I made the decision that her reaction to those dogs was potentially from a place of a lack of exposure and maybe also a learned behaviour. For the most part, she was super confident. She definitely needed more work on her exposure around dogs and loud noises like traffic. But other than that, she was really confident. After spending about three hours with her, we decided that we would take her home there and then. We had just been camping at the weekend, so our car was full of all this camping gear and it was like Jenga trying to fit all of our stuff back in, plus Zen. She ended up sitting in the front seat with Path and she was so little at that point that she could, she could fit on Path's knee. We of course gave her lots of time to settle in and as time went on we started to learn more about her and what kind of needs she had in terms of her training. We realised that there was two areas that she really needed to work on. The first one was her general exposure to different environments and second was her neutrality to other dogs. When we brought her back to the city it was very clear that the unpredictableness of the environment was very tough for her. When dogs appeared from behind parked cars or from behind corners, she would react to them. There were also times that if we were out in the countryside or we were at the local park and we were the only ones there, if a dog came in, she would not like that. And when I say reaction, I mean barking, lunging, heckles are up, the whole show. And there was a brief moment where I thought, is this going to become like full-blown reactivity and with her being six months old we are at a really like pivotal point in her development that we need to get this right. If we get this wrong she could grow into an adult dog that has potential reactivity issues for the rest of her life. If we get it right then she can turn into a socially confident dog that gets to enjoy the life that we all want our dogs to have. So my goal for the end of the three months was I wanted her to feel confident and empowered and that our relationship was the most important thing and that she could trust me. I no longer wanted dogs to be a cause of stress for her on our walks. So where did I start? I remember there was a moment where I felt so overwhelmed about where to start. Bearing in mind she had no foundations. She was a complete blank slate. So I journaled like everything I knew from training Lonzo and I kind of broke everything down into like what should we focus on first and from that process I created a framework. I love a framework and it was basically a pyramid starting with the base foundation being all about relationship. If you do not have a good relationship with your dog then the rest of the training is not going to go well. It is without a doubt the most important part of the puzzle so that's why it came first. There was three main ways that I focused on developing a relationship and that was through play, engagement and through confidence building. Play single-handedly was the thing that allowed us to develop such a strong relationship so quickly. Running around having fun with your dog and just experiencing that joy together just brings you together so quickly. For the engagement sessions, I focused on food play and luring sessions. We started in 
very low distracting environments like our back garden. And then we progressed into more and more challenging situations until she could do it in the city centre. And then the last piece of the puzzle was confidence building. Through helping her through things that she was nervous about, like jumping onto weird obstacles and helping her go down metal stairs that make a weird noise, she starts to trust me and realise that I'm going to help her through these tricky situations. Okay, I don't think anyone's going to be able to read this, but the next level... Um, was actually two blocks. The first one being communication and the second one being luring and shaping. The reason this was in the second level is because how am I going to help her through situations if I can't communicate with her? So I began with teaching her her marker words. We taught her yes, good, her release command, okay. And then we also taught her uh, 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 no. And as a lot of the things that I have taught Zen, it has all been through play. When certain situations arise in the game, I have been able to implement marker words that she has been able to learn and understand what those words mean. So she now fully understands that when I say the word yes, she has done the right behaviour and she can come to me for a reward. She understands that when I say good, she did the right thing, but it's not quite time to release from the behaviour yet. And when I say ah ah, it means you're not doing the right thing just yet and I'm going to help you get into that position. As well as the marker words, I also taught her what leash pressure means. Simply just marking and rewarding when she follows the pressure. I also taught her what it means when she feels taps from the leash. So for the second block, luring and shaping, this is where I started to teach her some of the skills she will need for obedience further down the line. I was teaching her how to follow my hand with food in it, focusing mostly on speed and her intensity to try and get the food. At this stage I didn't want her to hold the position for any amount of time, I just wanted for it to be this really fun and fast game that we got to play together. And for shaping I was just teaching her how to develop those problem solving skills that's involved in shaping. Okay, so now we have a solid relationship, we have a clear communication system in place and she understands luring. Continuing the theme of terrible handwriting. <laughs> so the third level is environmentals and this is where we work on her exposure and getting her confident in a variety of different environments. So multiple times a week we would go to a new place, whether it was a shopping car park, whether it was on a train, whether it was to go and sit in front of the bus station. We went to a variety of places, starting off with the easiest environment that she could deal with. And we slowly worked up the difficulty over time, knowing that she struggled with loud noises such as building work and she also struggled with dogs passing her, especially when it was in tight spaces. And during these sessions, we are either playing, doing an engagement session, or we are just watching the world go by. And the last piece of the puddle... Puddle? <laughs> Obedience. This was all the technical aspects, sit, down, stand, heel. These were the last things that we focused on. And some people might be wondering why. And I'll be honest, when I wrote down this framework, I kind of second guessed myself as well. However, it has completely paid off. Because we had built such a strong relationship and the trust was there that I would guide her through these situations she found challenging, she knew that she could look to me. And that made a huge difference in the way that she was feeling about these difficult situations in her mind. Now, of course, developing these skills will absolutely help you navigate some difficult situations. I don't think it is the first piece of the puzzle. For her, because it was more about the way she was feeling about the situation, I wanted to make sure that we addressed that first before we started moving on to the skills aspect. And we're now at a point where the feelings around other dogs and other environmental aspects is not so overwhelming for Zen. We can now walk through the city centre and pass dogs on the street and she's not phased by it. And that does not mean that she is completely rid of all of her anxieties that she had before. Progress is never linear and there's always going to be ups and downs and they're always going to keep us on our toes. But the most important thing is that you keep putting in the work and that you keep seeing that upward trajectory and you know you're on the right path.
So I hope this video was helpful to other people who are working on reactivity or just working on building a strong relationship with their dog. And if you enjoyed it or learned something, then please subscribe to our channel because I'm going to be putting out way more content like this in the future. Oh, you look so cute, Zanny.